Hi guys, Olive here, here today with a list of books all about pandemics. This has become quite the relevant topic over the past two, two and a half years as we all witnessed the rise of the novel coronavirus and saw the global impact that it had. And since it's something that affected basically every person on earth, I do think it's something extremely important to be educated about. And so in today's video, I'm going to talk to you about a handful of books that all discuss pandemics. Now, some of those are more general, others are more specific to COVID-19, but all of these are extremely informative. The first book on this list is actually the sponsor of today's video, and that is Bill Gates's new book, How to Prevent the Next Pandemic. This book is a look back at the COVID-19 pandemic and our global response to it. He looks at what we got right as a global community, but also where we went wrong. But this is also a forward-facing book in that it treats any of those missteps as learning opportunities. What can we do in the future to get ahead of these outbreaks and save countless lives in the process? This book is his plan for doing so. And just like his previous book on climate change, which I also reviewed here on this channel, this is a very policy-focused book. In here, he discusses actionable items that can be done on the individual level by us, but also on the global level by world leaders in order to make real progress on this issue. If we follow this plan, which is a very common sense plan, then we don't have to go through another pandemic. We don't have to lose all those lives unnecessarily. We don't have to go through the economic upheaval that I don't think any of us wanna go through again. And frankly, as a global community, we can't afford to go through it again. But there will be more viruses, and so we must be prepared. In this book, Bill Gates outlines that plan, starting with the simple things like studying any new viruses that pop up, especially ones that have jumped to humans from animals, and then using things like computer modeling to try to predict how novel viruses might spread, which I personally found to be a fascinating part of this book. He then moves on to a discussion about how we can be preparing ourselves ahead of time for any novel viruses and illnesses caused by novel viruses. Things like ensuring our healthcare system is properly set up to be able to handle any new illness. They have all the equipment they need. They have all the staffing they need. They are ready for it. But also things like building trust between people and public health organizations. But then when a new illness caused by a novel virus does emerge, he has a whole discussion in this book about how we respond? How do we contain it in order to prevent it from becoming the next pandemic? And then how do we very quickly, very efficiently develop new therapeutic treatments and vaccines in order to combat it? Just like his last book, I found How to Prevent the Next Pandemic to be very accessible, very common sense, and of course, applicable to each and every one of us. We don't have to go through this again. And if we on a global level invest the billions of dollars it will take to put his plan in action now, we can not only save ourselves trillions of dollars down the line, but much more importantly, we can save countless lives. To learn more, please visit Gates Notes, which I have linked in the description box below and in my pinned comment. For the next book on this list, let's back up a little bit and talk about a book that will give you a lot of good foundational knowledge about viruses and how they come to travel across the planet. That book is called The Viral Storm by Nathan Wolf. This book first looks at viruses themselves. It discusses how they work, it talks about how impressive they are, and also how they've come to infect us much more easily and frequently over the years as we humans have first brought ourselves closer to the animal kingdom through things like domestication and hunting, but then also how we've started to travel globally much more easily, much more frequently, which allows these viruses to spread. Throughout this book, the author does discuss a number of specific viruses and specific illnesses caused by specific viruses, things like monkeypox, HIV, malaria, rabies, and SARS. And he makes 
makes a really smart choice throughout this book, and that's to incorporate human stories, stories of people who have been affected by these viruses, by these illnesses, because this is a very science heavy book. But the inclusion of those stories makes this book a lot more approachable, as does the very, very manageable length of this book. It's something I definitely recommend for beginners. But if you're finished with the viral storm and you're looking for a place to move on to next, or if you just so happen to be in the market for a longer book about viruses, specifically about viruses that jump to humans from the animal kingdom, allow me to introduce Spillover by David Quammen. As I said in the full video review I did for this book here on my channel a couple of years ago, this is an epic work of nonfiction that takes on the topic of zoonoses, which are viruses that jump to humans from different animals and then have to adapt in order to be able to infect the human body. And in this book, Quammen takes on this topic with a series of case studies. And by that, I mean he talks about specific viruses, not unlike Nathan Wolf does in The Viral Storm, which is, I think, another reason why these make for very good read this, then that type of candidates. But in this book, he talks about viruses like Ebola. He talks about Hendra virus disease and also hand, foot and mouth disease, which I had no idea was a zoonosis before I read this book. But the author also spends a substantial amount of time talking about SARS which is a respiratory ailment caused by a coronavirus, but a different one than the one that causes COVID-19. And SARS didn't spread in the way that COVID-19 did for a number of different reasons that Quammen talks about, one of those factors being luck. I, of course, was most fascinated by this section, and not just because I was reading this book in the early days of the pandemic. I wanted to learn anything I could about coronaviruses. But also in this section, David Quammen, who wrote this book back in 2012, mind you, he made a chillingly accurate prediction about what the next big one would look like. And it looked a lot like what we saw with the novel coronavirus and COVID-19. He guessed a lot of the qualities that a new virus would have. So between that prediction and a lot of the information I read in the previous book, The Viral Storm, I think it is infinitely possible that we can make some really good guesses about what novel viruses will look like, what they will be capable of, things of that nature, which I think should go a long way in helping us prepare for them. I won't lie to you, Spillover is an extremely long book. It is a very big book. It requires a time investment. But if you've got that time and if you've got the interest in this subject matter, it's a good one. It is meticulously researched and includes a lot of interesting stories about real people who were infected by these zoonoses. But then the last two books on this list of books about pandemics are both focused on COVID-19. And the first of those two is The Premonition by Michael Lewis, which is a book all about how a specific group of people within the United States reacted to first the news of a novel coronavirus and then to the harsh realities of it, especially after it arrived here in the United States. Basically, the first three quarters of this book set us up as readers to hear the story the author aims to tell in the book's final quarter. So at first, we're introduced to a lot of important agencies and people. We learn what the U.S. public health system looks like. We learn what was known about how disease is spread at the time. And also we learn what the plan for a pandemic was at the time. That is to say that there is a lot of setup in this book, but don't let that give you the impression that any of that is uninteresting. It is incredibly interesting stuff. Very important to know as we go into the last quarter of the book in which the author tells the story of a small group of Americans who worked both within the confines of and also against the existing system in order to do what they felt was right, in order to protect as many Americans as they could. 
Michael Lewis is a fabulous storyteller, as I mentioned in my full video review of this book that I did not too long ago. He really focuses on the people within his stories. He allows you to really get to know them, to see the world through their eyes, and that lets you get so much closer to the stories that he's telling. It's one of many things that makes this book so compelling. But while the Michael Lewis book is very focused on a small window of time, that immediate Immediate response to the COVID-19 pandemic, the final book on this list zooms out a little bit and looks at the first year of the COVID-19 pandemic within the United States of America. That book is called The Plague Year by Lawrence Wright. This book takes a look at what was going on behind the scenes during that incredibly confusing and very scary first year of the COVID-19 pandemic, starting with the news coming out of Wuhan to the responses of global and local leaders to the economic implications and so on and so forth. This book includes so much data and a lot of different perspectives. Like I said, it was a very confusing year. And I found this book to be valuable in helping me round out my understanding of what was going on during that year. But also I found this book valuable because it humanized the COVID-19 pandemic. It put a human face on it by telling individual stories, individuals dying from COVID-19. I think when we're talking about viruses and pandemics, death can very easily be reduced to a statistic, a number, and that doesn't tell the true story of human suffering. So I think we need to hear those types of stories in order to understand what the cost of pandemics truly is. And in that way, I think this final book here on my list loops around rather nicely to the first book that appeared on my list, which was the Bill Gates book, because I think this chronicle of that first year of the pandemic, at least from an American perspective, serves as a really good reminder of how awful it was and underscores the fact that we don't want to go through this again and we don't need to if we take action. So those are the books on this subject that I wanted to bring to your attention, just in case you're looking to educate yourself, which me being a big nonfiction reader, I obviously think is very important. I would love to hear which of these books made it onto your TBR in the comment section below. Be sure to check out my pinned comment, as well as my description box for that link to Gates Notes. I highly encourage you to check that out. And if you would like to keep up with what I am reading and writing about right now, you can find me on a variety of places around the internet and all of my profiles will be linked at the bottom of the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.